This is a box cutter, and I'm holding this because I'm going to open a box, which is down here. This box, um, like many other pieces of gear that I get, has been a long time coming, and I've just really been waiting for an excuse to get this particular box or the contents of this box, and my excuse has finally come around full circle, which is that I'm scoring a film later this year called The Dunes. And so uh, part of how I feel the script is going um, and how I feel it should be laid out musically is I want to base some of this at least on organic instruments and since I've never played a cello before I thought it'd be a good idea to get one. I would like to point out that this is probably the cheapest one that I can find because that's what I wanted. I'm not really planning on <clears throat> again playing this in the band or anything. I just really wanted probably jam screwdrivers into the strings and uh, put electric drills inside of it and I don't know what else. I guess I'll figure it out as I go along. I think it's good to go. I mean, it sounds good to me. You tighten it like that. And so... Um, yeah, how much tension? Basically, um, you kind of just get a feel for it, but tight enough so that you're not... so that you can actually play the string, but not too tight that the bow is super straight. Like, you'll see it still has this curve yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. If this gets too tight, the bow will start to look more like that, and which is it's too tight. Got it. Yeah, so you want still want a little bit of bend there. I forget exactly the criteria. But, um, rosin, you have some shit. Yeah. They had a mosquito in in, in rosin, and that's how the, that's how Jurassic Park the movie was made because they yeah. found a mosquito. They made a dinosaur, and they're like, "Well, what are we gonna do with this dinosaur?" Life finds they're like, a way. Life finds a way. We gotta make a movie. You want to make sure that you have it on your bow before you start playing or else uh, it won't make good contact with the strings and sound weak. Well, I'm going to make this thing sound weak no matter how we look at this. I mean, if this instrument is amazing, I will find a way to make it sound terrible. Well, all I could really do right now is just make like cartoon noises. Okay. There's like nothing on it right now. Typically, you'll want to the point where it's like if you tap it with your finger, you'll see like a little puff of white rod and pop off. I almost got a tone. And you do like the violin thing where you go like this with it, right? Yep, that's exactly. This is right, right? Just exactly. like this? Alright. It yeah. feels awkward, but I know I'm doing it right. So. Shit, we're not recording. Oh, no. Plug it in. Yeah. How does this thing, how do you get this thing into an amp? I'm only getting tone now. Well, as expected, I got this brand new musical instrument not knowing how to play it. I've never touched one in my life, and it's evident because the video footage will confirm that I have no idea what I'm doing, and I can't even make any sound with this thing um, that's remotely useful. So mission accomplished. I can't wait to buy the next musical instrument that I don't know how to play. Get it, get it, get the robin, get the robin. Man, it's very dramatic. That was a very dramatic vacuuming session. Imagine my surprise and excitement this morning when FedEx shows up to my house before 10 a.m. That never happens because I think we are the last place in the world that anybody wants to make deliveries to, so we're pretty much the last to ever get deliveries, which is mean it means if FedEx stops delivering at 7, we're probably getting our packages at 6.59. So I had been waiting for this. Not just for like a week, but probably for a few years. Um, but it's more just been anticipating the purchase of this kind of setup. This is obviously not done. I have more modules that are on their way, but this is the first batch. And this is my Buchla setup, which I'm really excited about because this is a completely different way of thinking about synthesis over 
typical Eurorack analog synths. This this kind of operates a completely different way, a way that I've never patched or uh, or generated sound or produced before. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and there's such a learning curve that I'm watching really bad videos on YouTube, poorly recorded and everything else, just to learn how some of the stuff functions. Because there are there are no real perceivable manuals for these things. I think there's one from the 70s that somebody photocopied that's online, but this is a totally different series than the original one. And so I'm just basically trying to put some pieces together and it's really a lot about experimentation. The one thing that has me really excited about this system and had for a long time is the fact that you can recall settings, which is virtually impossible in the analog world in general. This system is set up where, through the circuit board, there is this memory module here, the 225E, uh, and there's also the 206E, which has similar functionality, that stores the settings of every module that's compatible with it. So any other E model uh, bukla will store values so I can kind of that's that's why I can play this sequence and then change to this preset and it'll totally change all of the settings go back to another one remembering that the first sound and the second sound can be completely different the second sound can be an atmospheric Drony pad or whatever I want to create. Um, it's just that for experimentation's sake and simplicity's sake, I started with just doing 16th note sequences because that was the simplest way for me to get sound up and running. Mm -hmm. 